Let us pray. O God, who is greater than the most powerful forces in this world, enable us to be still and know that you are God. O Lord, who answers out of the whirlwind of everyday life, breathe in us your Holy Spirit to strengthen, comfort, and guide us in the midst of the storms of life. O still small voice, speak to us that all we do may be in praise of your encompassing care. Amen. Our scripture readings today reveal the ways we experience, recognize, and are drawn into the work of God, the Trinity. God creates the world, giving each of us life. God redeems each of us, bearing our pain. And God calls each of us and sends us out to love the world. Psalm 29 shows God revealed in the whole of creation. God is beyond our imagination, energetically creating in all things, thundering, yet giving life. The passage from Romans affirms that God of infinite space and time is also infinitely personal. It has been said that the Trinity is a mystery which cannot be comprehended by human reason. It is only understood through faith. We could talk for many hours about the long and detailed history by which the doctrine of the Trinity was shaped, but I would like to focus on the community that is the Trinity, the model of all human community. If you think about it, Many aspects of our human community reveal the divine image, our ability to perceive God's presence, our experience and knowledge of the spiritual realm, our ability and our intellect, our ability to choose, and our capacity to live lives of love. These characteristics reveal much about ourselves and about God. Our relatedness to other people is at the very core of who we are. God knows how much we need different images of God for our lives. The Lord knows at times we need to feel the companionship of Christ in life. When the journey gets too tough, when the burdens get too heavy, when the decisions become too confusing, In those times, we need an image of God that we can relate to, with which we can have a personal relationship. And more than that, we need to have an image of God who understands the frustrations, the limitations, and liabilities of being human. When we experience those situations that make us want to scream at the heavens, God, you don't understand the frustrations and challenges of being human. The answer comes back, been there, done that, and I am with you now. In those moments, we can be grateful that we have an image of God who understands what we are going through. And in those moments, the Christ life is the exact image we need. Jesus is the image of divinity cloaked in humanity. And he demonstrated by walking with his disciples how God accompanies all of us on the paths of life. And by his miracles, he encouraged us to keep our eyes open to the miracles that are happening all around us every day. The Trinity reminds us there is much more to God than Christ. And God knows there will be times when we need to know that such as times when we stand under the star-filled skies at night. It is in those times I stand in awe of a wisdom far beyond my capacity to understand. And God knows there are times in our lives when we need to be humbled by experiences like that. Or times when we allow ourselves to believe that our wisdom is adequate to get us through life. There is something about standing before the awareness of a heavenly Father whose power has placed the stars in the heavens, the planets in their orbits. That same heavenly Father is able to take the cosmic events 
of our daily lives and use them to gift our lives with meaning and purpose. It is that God of outer space who introduces us to the cosmic dimensions of inner space, where our spirits are somehow placed in orbit around the spirits of others whose purpose unfolds in the very mystery of life itself. There are times when God knows that we need to stand in awe of that which is infinite be, infinitely beyond our capacity to understand and to know that in those moments we are deeply loved as a Heavenly Father loves his earthly children. Yes, God knows there are times in our lives when we need a Heavenly Father. God also knows that there are times when we need to become inspired by the wild, creative, unpredictable, glorious energy of the Holy Spirit. When our creativity needs encouragement, the Spirit comes with inspiration. There are times when I'm worn out and know that I don't have the energy to complete a pastoral task, and the Spirit comes as gift to provide the gentle energy to finish the task at hand. The qualities of spirit, as originally revealed, were feminine qualities, able to nurture, encourage, interpret, and guide to understanding, as a mother would do with her children, teaching us to accept reality and learn to deal with it another way. And to have felt that for me is the peace that passes understanding. Have there been times in your life when you knew that you should be frightened out of your gourd, and yet you knew that things would be okay? If you can identify a moment in your life when you decided to move forward with faith in God, I know you did so with a strange and silent courage. And do you know where that courage came from? That was a gift of spirit. Last week, as we celebrated Pentecost Sunday, we sang the hymn, Spirit. And we sang, as we sang that hymn, we sang about how the Spirit blew from the desert of liberation to the mountaintops of illumination, from the pathway of the present to the landscape of the future. And that Spirit has been helping us to understand how the Spirit works in our lives and in history. It's not a fatherly image of God. It's not an incarnate image of God. It's a feminine image of God that sweeps to the earth and gives new life. And the Lord knows there would be times when we would need to contend with an image like that. But the mystery of the Trinity is that for all the separate images of God we have, God cannot be divided, for God is one yet each somehow distinct. I can't explain what that means for God, but God knows that there are times when we need to experience God in different ways, so we celebrate God in all of its mystery and amazement. The experience of reverence requires the capacity to be amazed and filled with wonder. It cannot be explained by scientific formula. The Romans passage we read today tells us that all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. We have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, the word Abba means Daddy. Who but God would introduce divinity to humanity in terms of the image of family life? We are heirs, brothers, and sisters of Christ temporal incarnations. We are encouraged to call Abba Father, and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that gave us birth, was intended to be the birthing image of God. Memorial Day, like Trinity Sunday, is a day whose theme is community. The nation as community, military service as community, the family as community. There's very, something very powerful in words once used by Jesus. He said, my commandment is this, love one another just as I have loved you. The greatest love you can have for your friends is to give your life for them. 
The impact of his words can evoke strong emotions when we remember someone who did just that. Every Memorial Day, I'm reminded of the words of Lincoln in the Gettysburg Address, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. Our Lord knew that, and so when the world saw him give the last full measure of devotion on the cross, he knew it would inspire endless generations to live with increased devotion to God. He has called us with great divine strategy of calling human nature to its noblest possibilities by living with increased devotion to God. Surely, if he was willing to die to save us, we must also be willing to live to carry his legacy forward in time. In his words, to the close of the age and to the end of time. If you are living with increased devotion, the gifts of spirit, they come. They enable us to live triumphant and victorious lives. And those gifts include patience and suffering, generosity and poverty, forgiveness in a world of indifference. We are reminded today that all we have comes from God, the God who created this world and the God who sustains it and faithfully goes on providing. There is no greater time and no more urgent need for humanity to live with increased devotion, indeed with the determined to give to God the last full measure of devotion. For the body of humanity to survive, we must teach Christ's message at every level, trusting that God will give us the means and opportunities to do so. We are invited by Jesus to let our unique light shine. Our calling is to allow God's power to work through us. We cannot define or determine how God's will is being accomplished. We can only trust that it is. Pentecost Sunday, Trinity Sunday, in fact, the whole gospel is an invitation to the, let the Spirit of God take you in directions that you would not ordinarily go, to do things you did not think you could do, to live a life that is larger and deeper and of more significance and contentment than you could ever do for yourself. God often uses the whispering winds of spirit to evoke powerful changes in our lives, the fruits of which we may never see. However, God's spirit comes it breaks down barriers, welcomes outsiders, reconciles the separated, and energizes our own spirits. We are spiritually connected by God's design to the human family, to the rest of creation, and to the very mystery of God. There is no greater experience in life than to feel spiritually connected to the very mystery of all that is divine and temporal. Friends, on this Memorial Day weekend, I invite you to remember John Lennon's words from his song, Imagine. You may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us, and the world will live as one. Amen. <laughs>